All right, all right, you know what time it is. Neil Rana Rock Doc here with a story. Musician and artist Klaus Vormann celebrates his 83rd birthday today. Now, Vormann's association with the Beatles dates back to their time in Hamburg in the early 60s. And he's performed as a session musician on many famous recordings by other artists, including Carly Simon, Lou Reed, on and on. So today, I thought I'd tell you a few things about Klaus Vormann that you might not know. And as usual, a little background first. All right, so my story starts in Hamburg, Germany in 1960. Klaus and his then-girlfriend Astrid Kircher were living in Hamburg, and one night, Klaus got into an argument with Astrid and stormed out of the apartment. He took a walk, and he found himself on the Reeperbahn, the famous red light, well, that's the name of a street, but it's, it's part of the famous red light district of Hamburg, crowded with bars and strip clubs and prostitutes sitting in picture windows. Trust me, the Reeperbahn is a trip. My first time in the Reeperbahn was on a European tour with ELP in 1972. And I got to tell you, it flipped me out because it was my first experience of seeing a scantily clad lady sitting in big picture windows. And it left quite an impression. All right, but back to Klaus. So as he walked past a club called the Kaiser Keller, he heard music that made him stop in his tracks. And as Vorman put it, through a window, I heard rock and roll music being played live. It was the very first time that I'd heard live rock and roll music, and it turned out to be the Beatles, although I didn't know that at the moment. The second band that was on that night was Rory Storm and the Hurricanes with Ringo Starr on drums. When I went into the club, that was the band I saw first. I thought they were great, especially Ringo. And after they played, the Beatles came on stage. It was absolutely amazing. I'd never seen or heard anything like that in my life. <laughs> now at the time, Klaus was into both music and art, but his parents had pushed him into being a commercial artist, but he still had that love in music. That's why he went into the club when he heard the music. Okay, now the next day, he was so blown away that he had to bring his girlfriend Astrid to go see the Beatles, and Astrid happened to be a photographer and a clothing designer. And so he, Astrid, and a third friend, they all went back to the club to see the band. Now, the three of them really stood out because they were dressed mainly in black suede and leather with Kircher-designed unisex hairstyles. <laughs> so uh, Lennon, apparently, John, wasn't too impressed when Klaus tried to talk to him. But Stu Sutcliffe, who was in the Beatles at the time, was very impressed. And over the course of time, Klaus and his crew became seriously good friends with all the Beatles, including John in some ways, especially John, as you'll see later in the story. Okay, now, as George Harrison put it, Astrid and Klaus were very influential. I remember we went to the swimming baths once and my hair was down from the water and they said, no, leave it, it's good. I didn't have my Vaseline anyway and I was thinking, well, these people are cool. If they think it's good, I'll leave it like this. They gave me that confidence and when it dried off, it dried naturally down, which later became the look. <laughs> okay, so dressing and hair and all of that stuff. Uh, these were very influential people. Klaus eventually moved to London, and he lived with George and Ringo for a while. Then he moved back to Germany, where he formed a band. He was a really good bass player. Uh, and the band was managed by Beatles manager Brian Epstein. As a matter of fact, the first time John Lennon and George Harrison dropped acid, they went to see Klaus's band. <laughs> now, fast forward to 1966. Klaus, again, is living in London. He's playing music and he's working as a graphic designer because he was very good at that too. <coughs> and John Lennon really liked his graphic design. So with the approval of the other Beatles, he went to Klaus and asked Klaus to design the album cover for Revolver, which of course he did. You all know what that looks like. Okay, at the same time, Vorman, as I said, he was a great bass player, and he became a member of Manfred Mann's band 
after he turned down offers from both the Hollies and the Moody Blues. All right. And then in September of 1969, out of nowhere, John Lennon asked Klaus to be part of the Plastic Ono Band, which, of course, he did as well. Vorman went on to play on all the Beatles solo projects with the exception of Paul. And interestingly, after the Beatles broke up, there were many rumors going around that they'd reform as the Ladders, with Vorman replacing McCartney on bass. Of course, it never happened. <laughs> Klaus, as I said early on, was also in-demand session player. Uh, he played on You're So Vain, uh, Carly Simon. He played on a couple of cuts on Lou Reed's Transformer. Did some stuff with Leon Russell, Peter Frampton, Harry Nielsen. The list goes on and on. He's mostly retired now, but he still works as an illustrator. And in 2020, Klaus designed the cover for a new album called Reckless Abandon by Mike Campbell's group, The Dirty Knobs. Mike Campbell, formerly from Tom Petty, new group, The Dirty Knobs. Klaus Foreman designed the album cover. All right, that's it. That's my story. I hope you enjoyed it. Really an interesting, amazing man. Klaus Vorman, listen to some of his bass stuff, look at some of his art. I'll have more stories as the days go on. You know where to find me around the internet. And as I always like to tell you, always remember to keep on rocking. All right, bye for now.